Welcome. So today we will talk about one of the most important topics and that is a topic important from an individual perspective, be it a producer, consumer or a borrower of money and that is money itself. So let's talk about how this all started. Let's say when in the olden days I was looking to get some of the commodities which I could not find in my agricultural area, then there was a barter system. That means if in my field, I have rice that is growing. I could exchange it for, let's say, another commodities that could be vegetable. So there could be a mutual exchange. The person growing vegetable could get some rice from me and in line, I could get some vegetables. So both of, the, both of us were well satisfied. But what would happen if I do not require vegetable and the person that is provided to whom I am giving the rice does not have anything else to give. So there would be some disturbance we could say that would be created and how to rule it out. So there was an idea about creation of a common me medium of exchange. This common medium of exchange was what was known as money. It could be in the form of coins, later it was in the form of notes, bank deposits and so on and so forth. So what are some of the basic characteristics of this term money, what we could say? First is its durability. That means if the coins have been brought into the market today, they would last for at least a period of 20 years, 30 years or so. Similarly goes with the notes. So they are long lasting. Bank notes are usually considered to be made of polymers in contrast to paper. So it's believed that if you pick a US dollar, bend it forward, backward for more than 1000, 4000 times, still it would not damage. So that's the reason you have a higher durability. Similar to these, polymer notes have also been later seen in the regions of Singapore, Hong Kong, Australia, Brunei and so on. The next idea is, if we look on to the durability of notes versus coins, definitely coins are much more durable, have a longer period of duration that could be seen. The next important point is acceptability. So it, whatever it comes in the market, be it a banknote or a coin, this should have an acceptability into the market. There, that means it's an official tender. So gold, we can say, is officially a universal tender that could be seen, which is accepted globally. Now, what happened in this terms? Zimbabwe had a hyperinflation period during 2009. So what happened was within a single month, there was a sudden flare in the price of the Zimbabwean currency. But against a US currency, the rate significantly dropped. And this created the pressure on the economic conditions in Zimbabwe. So what happens is, whenever you have a civil unrest or a kind of precision period that is being witnessed, you could have episodes of severe inflation which could turn into hyperinflation or stagflation which we have covered in separate lectures. If you want to have those details, you can refer that separately. The next is divisibility. Previously, when there was a barter system, let's say I have a cattle or a cow to barter. Definitely, I cannot divide it. I will have to hand over the whole of the cattle or the cow. But with notes, with coins, you have divisibility that turned easier. So that's another advantage of it. The next important advantage that we can turn uh, or we can think about is uniformity. So let's say if you have a $100 note, a $20 note, it appears to be uniform in shape, size, uh, in appearance, and therefore it's much easier to comprehend. You don't have to put a extra pressure on your memory, as simple as that. But in case if I have cows with me to trade, each of the cow would be different and there would be no uniformity. So definitely how much you have to pay against what cow becomes difficult. The next is scarcity. If salt or seashells, which were considered as currencies during one time, had lost their significance. And why was it? Simply because there was an oversupply. So this currency is important 
<coughs> only till a time there is shortage or there is limited quantity that is into circulation as soon as the quantity increases as happened in zimbabwe its importance gets lost and therefore scarcity is one of the major characteristics of money the next important thing is portability definitely if i have a coin in hand if i have a banknote in hand i can just have it and i can move around but on the other hand if we are trading with cows and cattle i cannot move across boundaries so easily as with the money so that is another important criteria that we understand moving from all these characteristics to why actually we need this money what is the function of money simply put it's a medium of exchange so rather than having cows rather than having rice or vegetables as one of the barter commodities you can have money as a simple medium of exchange next important aspect is measure of value that means there is a specific unit that it accounts for and that unit decides how much market value it pertains to <clears throat> so you have a measure of value another important criteria that we must think about is it's a store of value that means you can have a note right now and use it later might be 6 months later so that's a kind of store you can have your savings in your bank and use those later when you actually need those so there is a store of value however with cows you cannot actually store them for unlimited period they have their own life the next is standard for or a standard of a deferred payment that means it's considered as a standard for the future payments that i am trying to do so let's say i take a loan today against that loan i have to repay sometime in future definitely bank would not leave me so when i am trying to repay that in future that is i am there with this money which is one of the major functions and therefore it is a standard for the future payments that are there in line now why this whole issue of bartering that we have been discussing so far was not that practical as money the first few things that we talked about under the characteristics of money are the drawbacks for the barter system the first important drawback is as we said during that time it is not divisible so i cannot divide cows it is not portable i cannot take the cow from one place to another place and keep on going as easily as the coins or the notes that could be there the next important is double coincidence of want that means if let's say i am having the production of rice as we discussed and my friend is having the production of vegetables both of us are engaged in trade but i do not actually require vegetable and he does not actually require rice then the trade becomes insufficient uh, inefficient i would say and the bartering is not successful so what we need to do is to create a common exchange thing that i could give him or he could give me which could be used somewhere else where we could derive something else which we actually require so might be my friend is looking for some cattle so if i give him or hand him over the money he could get a cattle from somewhere else so that is one of the major problems that we say barter system has and this is double coincidence of want the next important thing is talking about the central bank and the commercial bank so this looks like a family structure so you have the whole of the family with your grandparents and that is your central bank then comes your parents which are the commercial banks and that's how you can simply understand the whole scenario of the central bank and the commercial bank now central bank overseas and manages the whole of the money supply in a nation the banking system in the nation the monetary policy that comes into line overall the money flow and manipulation of interest rates are some of the major functions of central bank besides that you also have some of the important functions which could be issuer of banknotes and coins now across the globe you have seen 
the central banks let's say in india you have reserve bank of india in europe you have european central bank in china you have people's bank of china in us you have us federal reserve so those are the central banks now these central banks have an authority to print the coins uh, to print the notes mint the coins but there is a very good exception that you must know and that is hong kong hong kong has three commercial banks the standard charter hsbc and bank of china all of those have note issuing rights but the hong kong monetary authority controls the entire uh, money control systems or the banking systems and the circulation of the notes and the coins so be very careful you have one very good exception and that is hong kong here besides hong kong most of the nations that you see have the printing of the notes the minting of the coins that's done by the central bank <clears throat> the next important idea is government's bank it is a kind of bank account for all the government funds that is coming in the government loans the government infrastructural ideas the government uh, public uh, public sector debt that is going in and any other thing that government needs to either take as a receipt or as an expenditure from the center would be taken care by the central bank now bankers bank how do we understand that each of the commercial bank each of the parent that is there has to put in something with the grand parent and that's the central bank so when i say the commercial banks which are your parents have to put in something with your grand parents which is the central bank that is what is bankers bank so you have the cash reserves which are maintained for the commercial banks by the central bank and this central bank whenever there is a need for immediate withdrawal uh, the commercial banks can function much more efficiently because there is a kind of liquidity that is present they can look on to their grandfathers gr grandparents and say okay this is the time of need where you can actually help me or not so that's where you have the commercial bank and the central bank model that goes in the last year is the lender of the last resort so if nothing goes true since the commercial bank is keeping some cash with the central bank during a financial emergency central bank acts as a reserve and this could basically help all other uh, commercial banks and all other small units that are there now there are few terms that we should be familiar with actually what is bailout when we say you have a financial assistance that is required for a company but the company faces bankruptcy and a difficult financial situation so this is a kind of bailout that is talked about usually when we say there is job loss there is socio economic failure we have a scenario where you have a severe bailout that could be seen good examples are cyprus cyprus invested nearly 10 billion dollars in the bailout process which was accounted to nearly 56% of its gdp and there is where we need to have a very strong banking system nationalization of banks in india was part of it the next important concept that we focus on is a stock exchange stock exchange is also known as brews now this is stock exchange when we focus on is a international institutional marketplace where shares of a public limited company can be brought in so each of the countries have their own stock exchanges for example a uh, new york stock exchange in america you have london stock exchange in britain then you have bombay stock exchange national stock exchange in india you have frankfurt stock exchange in germany shanghai stock exchange in china what are the functions of a stock exchange definitely raising share capital to the business so stock exchange provides the public limited companies to have a huge amount of finance that they can derive from the stocks now share capital is the main source of finance for them ipo which is known as the initial public offering many companies share, sell their shares in the market for the first time and this is known as the initial public offering the popular ones get oversubscribed and this forces the share prices to go further up so existing companies which are listed in the stock exchange 
can raise more and more shares by selling additional uh, sale in the share issuance that is there. The next important thing, the second important parameter is company's growth. Now, when I say company's growth, IPO, initial public offering, uh, is one of the ways to gain in more finances for the company. Now, let's talk about a very good example from Brazil. So, Brazil oil company, which was known as Perobras, gained nearly $70 million dollars when it acquired uh, some of the companies through the additional shares in the going into the public. Similarly, with acquisitions and mergers, this happened. So Walt Disney acquired Lucasfilm. And that was a deal where you had uh, the New York Stock Exchange where nearly four point uh, nearly $4 billion were created by mergers and acquisition. The next is facilitating the sale of government bonds now what is government bond bond is similar to a loan that is raised by the government but the bond holders do not have the rights they can earn interest based on the number of bonds that are brought the prevailing interest rate that is into the market and the finance that generates basically goes into government infrastructural projects the next important idea or the function of a stock exchange is to have a price mechanism for the trading. So based on the relative demand and supply that goes into the market, you have fluctuations and valuations that are taken into account. Safety for the transactions is again important. So to have this whole process run smoothly, it runs under a legal framework and then you have a better amount of confidence that could be seen both in the buyers as well as the sellers. The last important thing that we would be talking about is our parents as we said and that's the commercial bank. So moving from the grandparents, the central bank to the commercial bank, the idea of the commercial bank is to maintain deposit. It can also help in the transactions that are mainly for the financial purpose. Now there there are two major functions of a central bank which we can broadly classify. We say those are primary and secondary functions. Primary function is first to accept the deposit. So you can create a deposit with your existing sa savings that are there. These deposits could be either a side deposit or a time deposit. Time deposit means you would be payable after a certain period of time expires and side deposit means you are payable on demand. So whenever you require, you would get it. Time deposits usually have better interest rates. So if you are planning to invest, think of a time deposit. Simply a suggestion. The next is you are trying to make advances. That means if I am looking to buy a new house, then I can definitely look for a loan and whom I would look for is the commercial banks. The next is creation of credit. So credit creation is another important primary function of a commercial bank because here bank tries to increase the supply of money in the economy and that is only by making more money available to the borrowers. Since more money is available to the borrowers, you are bringing a thrust to the purchasing power capacity of an individual. And that is where we say there is creation of credit. Some of the secondary functions include uh, the facilities of collection and clearing of the check on behalf of the client. Then you have financial services, credit card facility, money transfer facility. You have safe deposits like lockers where you could keep in your jewelry or documents. You also have nowadays internet banking facility that is available. Now, besides this, you have two important things that you must be careful about while dealing with your commercial banks. That is the facility for overdraft. Overdraft means it's a banking service which allows a customer to use beyond the amount of money that is present in their actual account. So there is definitely a overdraft fees that you must be careful about. The next important term that you must be familiar with is mortgage. So mortgage is a long term secured loan for purchasing a asset now this could be a residential property this could be a commercial property that could be there so those are some of the most important functions now of recent later from 1995 you have the concept of internet banking that is started or e-banking that we could say that started and commercial banking is not a lot old it's merely 200 years old in contrast to this the banking itself 
is traced back to 2000 BC. So there has been a huge gap that is there. The, the oldest known trading patterns or the banking patterns were seen in the regions of Babylonia and Assyria where you had loans to the farmers and the traders that were granted. So that was all about money. We would be covering most important topics in economics. Stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.